Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering fibromyalgia. I'm going to be going over the most important things that you need to know. If you get a test question on fibromyalgia, it's going to cover one of these. It's going to be a short video. I get straight to the point. This is the book that I'm going to be teaching fibromyalgia out of. Um, I know when I make these lessons, you guys always want to know which book I'm teaching. So for fibromyalgia, this is the book I'm teaching out of it. You can get it at... Um, uh, Amazon. Before I get started, please guys help support my channel. How can you help support my channel? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, share my content, share my content on your social media feed, or if you have a classmate or a nursing instructor, anyone you know that's in interested in nursing, please share my content with them. Don't forget I have um, other content that I do on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And I also have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Now that I got my plug in, let's get started. All right, guys. So fibromyalgia. Here we are. Let me make this bigger for you. All right, so fibromyalgia, look what it says. It says fibromyalgia is a chronic pain syndrome that involves chronic fatigue, generalized muscle aching, stiffness, sleep disturbance, and functional impairment. Guys, when you are studying, don't just read just to read. Make sure you actually understand what these words are saying to you. So let's go back to the beginning. It says fibromyalgia is a chronic. Guess what that word chronic means? That means this is something that is ongoing. This is not something that happened overnight. And it's not something that's ending overnight. This is something long-term, okay? So it's a long-term pain syndrome. What does that word syndrome mean? Syndrome is a cluster of signs and symptoms that... Um, point to a certain diagnosis. So when you see that word syndrome, just think of a cluster of clinical manifestations. Okay. So fibromyalgia is a long-term pain disorder that has a whole bunch of symptoms that involves chronic fatigue. These are, this is the cluster guys, chronic fatigue. They're tired all the time generalized muscle aching that can cause that feeling of fatigue, stiffness, sleep dis disturbances, and functional impairment. So even though they're tired all the time, they're unable to sleep. And guess what? If I had all of these, I wouldn't be able to get anything done either. I would have functional impairments. I wouldn't be able to move the way that I'm supposed to either. Okay. So this is the picture of what that patient with um, fibromyalgia looks like. Now let's go to the pathophysiology. What is actually happening in this patient with fibromyalgia? The amplified pain experienced by patients with fibromyalgia is neuro neurogenic in origin. Let's go back. Remember what I said, guys, whenever you're reading, don't just be reading the read. Make sure you understand what the writer is saying to you. Look at this the amplified pain. They could have just said pain, okay? They use this word, they use this adjective amplified for a reason. That means that this pain is pronounced. This pain is magnified. This pain is extreme, okay? This amplified pain experienced by patients with fibromyalgia, um, fibromyalgia is neurogenic is origin. What is this telling us? This is telling us that that patient's brain is telling them that they feel pain. And guess what? Anything triggers this pain that this patient's feeling. Anything can trigger this pain at any time. Medical management. NSAIDs, TCAs, and think about it, guys. You know TCAs, those are types of anti-depressants. Uh, um, this patient with fibromyalgia, let me explain to you. This pain is so severe, they never know when it's going to... Um, Come on. So this patient really doesn't even like leaving the house because they're so afraid of being out in public or going somewhere and that pain, just something triggering them and them having that pain. Okay. So wouldn't you be depressed about that? And sleep hygiene measures are used to improve or restore normal sleep 
patterns, cognitive behavioral therapy, cognition, how you think. Behavior is the manifestation or how you behave. So um, part of the therapy for the fibromyalgia is cognitive behavior therapy to improve the sleep and attentional dysfunction, specifically the motor dysfunction that this patient experiences. Let's keep going. In addition, SSRIs and anticonvulsants have been effective in preliminary reports. Now let's talk about this right here. SSRIs, they are our number one go-to medication when it comes to depressants. So when a patient has depression, the first line treatment that you expect to be ordered for that patient is SSRIs because they work so well and they have the least amount of side effects as far as antidepressants are concerned. So what it's saying is SSRIs and anticonvulsants. Well, why anticonvulsants? Because if you go back, guys, it says, oh, I keep forgetting my thing is broke at. Give me a second. Let me just scroll this down for you. It tells us when we look at the pathophysiology that it's neurogenic in origin. So it makes sense that these psych meds have shown to actually um, show some type of effectiveness for fibromyalgia. Individualized programs of exercise have been helpful. Um, let's think about it, guys. Exercise is not only helpful to stretch out those muscles and get that body moving. If you've taken psych already, you know that those patients who experience um, depression or even anxiety that really don't want to go out anywhere or do anything, it's good to get them to exercise because what? It releases those endorphins. It um, helps that patient start to feel better. Exercise not only is good physically, guys, it's good psychologically for the patient. Let's take a look at nursing management. Look what it says. Typically, patients with fibromyalgia have endured the symptoms for a long period of time. <clears throat> Excuse me, because remember, guys, fibromyalgia, it's not acute, it's chronic, something long-term. So they've building, been dealing with this for a long time. They may feel as if their symptoms have not been taken seriously. Nurses need to pay special attention to supporting these patients and providing encouragement as they begin their program therapy. And so something that's very important, guys, is that um, as a nurse, you can refer them to resources in the community outside the inpatient un outside that inpatient unit where they can get support. They can get support out in the community and not only for them, whoever their um, caretakers are. So the important thing you guys need to get out of fibromyalgia, you have to um, really appreciate how painful this is and how it affects every aspect of the patient's life. And um, therefore many patients with fibromyalgia happen to also have some level of depression because it really limits their life and their lifestyle and how it used to be. Okay, don't forget about those meds. Again, NSAIDs, TCA, let me scroll down again. NSAIDs, TCAs, um, behavioral therapy, exercise have been very helpful. And of course that sleep needs to be addressed. Let me tell you guys something. Remember, I tell you in all my videos, Priority is always going to be physiological integrity. What keeps that patient alive? Fluid and electrolytes, vital signs, glucose, ABC, hemodynamic status, sleep. Yeah, because that patient goes long enough without sleep, the what? Crash, okay? So anything that affects the patient's physiological status, that's always going to be a priority. So just keep that in mind. And of course, um, you want to provide that patient with resources out in the community. So when they're discharged, they don't feel like they're alone. They actually have those resources. Guys, that is fibromyalgia in a nutshell. Um, I plan on doing a video for you guys for gout. For gout. Um, the only reason I didn't do that video for this video is because gout is a little bit heavier and I've worked all day. I'm exhausted and I just want to do justice if I did that video now, but fibromyalgia was short. This was something that I was able to get up to you and give you the most important things you needed to know the meat and the potatoes of fibromyalgia. So guys, I hope you 
enjoyed this video. Although it was a short video, guys, I gave you all the key points of the most important things you need to know about fibromyalgia. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover in the comments. And if you'd like to see me com um, cover it like I'm doing now as a lesson, or if it's something you'd like to see me cover on what I do Sundays, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when I cover them as questions. So go ahead, sound off in the comment section. Let me know. Please don't forget to share my content, guys. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to check me out on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will see me on my next video.